So good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday morning yoga therapy. And this morning we are in the spiritual heart, neck and shoulders. Bending the knees, feeling the earth. Feel your feet, the bottoms of your feet. And then as you inhale, bringing your arms up to a height that works for you. Notice any tingling in the fingers as you get to various heights. You start feeling that back off. Exhale through the center. And I like to imagine a waterfall going down my whole body, front, sides, back, and then feel the earth below me, maybe some meadows or rocks, wherever you like maybe a stream of water, inhale through the radiance of the sun all around you. And exhale, let that waterfall cleanse away any tension. Unnecessary tension. Inhale, filling up with radiance, energy, joy, exhale, letting go of anything obscuring that experience. Keep this going your own timing, maybe adding the breath. I'm just gonna let one more person in. Constricting the throat if that works for you. If you're newer to the practice, constricting the throat on exhale is a great way to start. Inhale is a bit harder. And ending with your hands at the heart. And for the neck and shoulders, and connecting with the spiritual heart, inhale, arms at the sides. Now, find the height that works for your body. Is it shoulder height? Is it hip height? Or is it even higher towards your head? Exhale, hands to the heart. So I'm just going to show those three positions. You can play with all three and just notice how they affect the neck and shoulders. And I personally like the palms up. You might like the palms down. So at the lower height, I go to the belly with my hands on exhale. The medium height, I go to the heart. And I like to bow the head to the heart as I exhale, adding that flossing of the neck. So for my body, this high height is quite challenging for my neck. So just notice that in your own body, do you have a spot that maybe is a little less resourced? And is it helpful to go into it or should you just leave it alone for now and work around it? So in yoga therapy, we often work around problematic areas and then let them Find their space, their sukham. And notice whether that nodding of the head up and down works for you. Classically, we keep our heads still in Krishmacharya's yoga, but if you have some arthritis in your neck or something like that, it might be helpful to add that nod up and down. Adding the bhavana of the sun, and I'm adding the bend of the knees to just add a bit of tracking of the knees. And if you like adding an ohm as you exhale, 
using the throat. And the gut. As you exhale, really draw the belly in so it deepens your sound. Jai pranayama constricting the throat. Oh. Just in your samastiti, even standing pose. We can be together or part of your choice. Make an intention linked to your heart. So it may be, may I be filled with loving kindness. And you can offer that kindness to others, to nature, to the whole world. find another way to express your deepest heart's desire. When you're ready, if it's comfortable, we're going to go up on the toes as we bring our arms to the sides. Inhale, coming up. And we're going to exhale, come down. And we're going to keep this going. And if it's comfortable, we're going to add Niyasam. Again, if you're newer to the practice, you might want to skip this part. But for those of you who know it or want to try, inhale, thumb up the first finger. Exhale, finger down, thumb, and flick. Next, thumb up the middle finger. Middle finger down the thumb, and flick. Thumb up the ring finger. Ring finger down the thumb, and flick. Thumb up the little finger. Little finger down the thumb, and flick. Flick. This is an ancient practice used for counting pranayama, and you can do it with asana, especially in this pose. My teacher, Viji, in her 70s, this is one of her favorite versions of this. Always reminds me of Chennai. Now, if this seems too much, you can just touch the fingertips as you come up and down. So you can just touch one of the fingertips as you inhale and exhale and then just switch to the next finger. It's a simple version of Niyasam. And this stimulates the nerves in the hands going up the arms and into the upper back, neck and shoulders. There's three nerves. My teachers use this for neck and shoulder pain. For those of you practicing pranayama, I personally use this to count my breath first with one hand and then the other. I do eight rounds or 12 rounds, 12 breaths, that is three rounds. So you can think about that. Do it to count mantras as well. And notice how that gives your hands a really good workout. We're just going to do one more round. It's great for concentration. 
You press as hard as you can with that finger sliding up and down. And you can also just slide up and then hold, for example, or slide down and hold. I have my focus slightly down as I do this for balance, but also to keep my focus internal. It's a very different energy when you look straight ahead versus slightly down. And so it doesn't become mechanical. Can I try to time the movement of my arms with my toes coming up? pausing between inhale and exhale. And especially when you come down, it's very tempting to bring those heels down first, but can I time bringing the heels down with bringing my arms down? All right, give it a shake. You might be a little <laughs> tense in your hands after all of that. It's a good one to try to do every day if you do have um, the beginnings of arthritis or you just want to uh, ward that off with computer work, etc. Let's do some side bends. We're gonna inhale, come up. Let's just skip the toes for now. And exhale, coming to the side. Now your hands can be together like I'm showing. You can hold opposite elbows. I'm gonna do that version, or you can interlock your fingers and have the palms out. So just going side to side. If you have a wall that you can use, this is really nice to do with a wall behind you. As you who have been to my Hastings studio, you might imagine that or remember doing this at the wall. Notice any tightness in the hips, but also in the upper back in the rib cage. This is really getting into those intercostal muscles that hold the ribs together and they tend to get a bit compressed with sitting And that can cause pain in the upper back or the lower back. It can also cause pain in the hip. So I do side bends, I would say every day in my practice, some sort of side bend. So this is not a movement we do in everyday life. So we're not going around doing this usually to reach for our box of cereal or whatever it is. And then maybe staying on one side. And if you want, you can add one foot or the other crossed over. It just depends. Now last week we did this at the wall. And what I found is actually crossing, um, I think the other foot, oh, this way. I think um, crossing the other foot worked better, which was interesting. So that's an option. It's hard to breathe deeply here, but try to lengthen at least the exhale. And then coming out of it and going to the other side, you can use the wall or not. Use the wall just for fun. Try to lengthen that exhale. The inhale will be a bit short. Notice one side is tighter than the other. Inhale coming up and release. Okay, so we're gonna move into some back arches. And so bringing the left foot forward, the right foot back. Inhale, arms at the side, opening that heart. Exhale, drop the shoulder blades down, draw the belly in. Inhale, arms coming up, warrior one. And exhale from here, you can come 
with your hands at a chair or all the way down. So I don't have my chair today, but you can certainly use one. Inhale, coming up, arms at the side right away. Exhale, drop those shoulder blades down. Now I've got my thumbs back a little bit, which for my body feels good. That's going to depend on you. Inhale, arms coming up, warrior one, Vibhira Patrasana. Exhale, forward bend. Parshva Uttanasana, I'm looking at my alignment, heel to heel or heel to arch or wider. Inhale, bend that front knee and start coming up, arms at the side. Exhale, dropping the shoulder blades. Inhale, arms coming up. We're going to do this around four times and then stay. Exhale, forward bend. Draw the belly in from the pelvic floor all the way up to the belly button. Inhale, coming up. Breathing into the chest and possibly also into the belly. You could keep the lower belly still. Exhale. Inhale into the chest, into the belly. Exhale, four bend. We're going to stay now. In this position, if you want, inhale. Extend the spine, lift the chest, get the belly forward on the thigh. Exhale, forward bend. Stretching the whole spine. You can do this with blocks. You can do this hands on the chair. Your body will very clearly tell you what it likes or doesn't like. And when we're in class together, of course, I can help facilitate that process. I can see a little bit on the video, but in this practice, it becomes more important for you to have that interoception, really feeling inside your body and listening deeply. What does my body want? Is this the right version of this pose for me? Part of the practice is developing that ability and trusting it. And that helps you trust that voice in your whole life, which helps guide your decisions. When you're ready, just stay in the pose. Bend that front knee as well, or bend and straighten. Just play with that if that feels better, if you've got some tightness in that hamstring. These four bends, very good for settling, for grounding, for letting go of tension in the mind and the body. And when you're ready, starting to come up, starting to bend that front knee. And stepping back. Finding your samastiti, going to the other side. Stepping your right foot forward or the other, whatever that is. Back foot turned out. Find your stance, bending that front knee over the ankle. That's your warrior. Adding the arms. Inhale, arms at the sides. Palms up, thumbs back. Bending the front knee. Exhale, draw the belly in from the pelvic floor up as you drop those shoulders down. Inhale, warrior one. Arching the back, if that feels good. If it doesn't, you can do a more elongated back like that. Exhale, forward bend. Can you start to straighten that front knee? Let's just see where it's at right now today. Inhale, coming up, we're gonna do this four times. Exhale. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, Parshva Uttanasana. Inhale, arms at the side, bending the front knee. Exhale, drop the shoulder blades. 
Feel the back foot, the little toe side rooting down. Inhale, Virabhadrasana, warrior one. So classically, you're looking forward, modification is looking up. So warriors look forward, they do not look up. That's what Krishmacharya said, exhale forward then, which I think is quite true. We're gonna do one more. I think this might be number five, but we're gonna do one more. Inhale up. Exhale forward bend, you're gonna stay now. You can add that stiti movement. Stiti means stability. So you lengthen the spine and find that strength and stability in the spine. And then exhale, can you keep that length in the lower back as you round the upper back? Being up on the fingertips or having blocks or chair can help with this. Get more stretch in the hamstrings by getting that length in the lower back. It's just how the hamstrings work. And if you have any tightness in the side of the lower back, that QL area, you might want to adjust your pose so that you're coming a bit more to one side as we stay because you might be getting some compression. So for some of you, if that's the case in your lower back, adjust the pose till you're getting the right stretch in the hip lower back. And you might like all those positions. Focus on long, smooth exhale. Constricting the throat if you can. Stay here four to six breaths when you're ready, starting to come up halfway first if you like. Inhale, exhale, stay. Inhale the rest of the way. Exhale, turn back to the center, find your samstiti. And notice how you feel. You're probably feeling one leg more than the other right now. So just notice that it's kind of having used one leg. We're gonna bring it back to both. So the counter pose is using both legs. We're gonna do a side version of this pose to work on the upper back, neck and shoulders. So again, just remember arms front is more lower back muscles. So arms side is more upper back, neck and shoulders. Inhale, arms at the sides radiating like the sun. Exhale, I'm gonna sweep those arms behind in a circle. Actually, I have to say, I like to bring the moon into this one. More of the receptive energy. And then the hands are going on the lower back, palms up. Inhale, I'm reaching behind, my palms are up. Gradually drawing that full moon all around me. And exhale, forward bend. And just keep this going your own timing. If you wanna do a half version of this, you can just bring your head to a chair. And the palms to the lower back as you come forward. You can always bend the knees. I personally find I get a better stretch in my lower back when I bend my knees. And that's because I have a bit of lordosis or sway back, but uh, depends on your spine. So just play with that. Just find which one works best for you. I'm just having a look at all of you move as I move with you. Bringing in that bhavana of the full moon. The full moon 
represents that alignment between the mind and the soul. So the soul is the sun with the spirit radiating brightly. The mind is the moon receiving that light. And when the mind is clear, there's no change. That moon stops changing, it's just full, receiving, reflecting, trusting. In this time of history where safety is forever being mentioned, keep safe. I think our sense of safety has been a little bit disturbed. So I think learning how to connect deeply within us is going to become even more important. That's the foundation of many of the Eastern practices. We're going to come halfway up now, if you like. So inhale halfway up. This is getting a bit more into the lower back, so be careful. You might just bring your hands side rather than overhead. That's more lower back. Side is more upper back. Exhale forward then. Ardha Uttanasana. Inhale, coming all the way or hands halfway up. Now, if that doesn't feel strong enough for you, you can make it harder by exhaling, bending those elbows, and I like to bend the knees at the same time, drop those shoulder blades, inhale, extend long, exhale, create that circle and come forward and down. So pick any version of this you like. This is strengthening the whole back, neck and shoulders. I personally find this strengthens my back more than cobra on the belly. So I have been trying to bring those back into my practice, no pun intended. But I do find these more effective. When you think about it, physically, there's just a greater distance between you and the floor, greater lever. You need more strength to hold that up. Very strengthening for the core. Keep that pelvic floor slightly engaged as you do this. So breathing more into just the chest as you inhale. And that's the earlier teaching of Krishmacharya. The, the belly was held even on inhale. When you're ready, just coming all the way up, you might want to take a rest on those arms or include them. And exhale. Hand to the heart, hands to the heart. Notice your weight on your feet. Has, has it returned to both feet now, having done the counter pose? Just reminding yourself of your intention, your heart's intention this morning. I've been doing a lot in my own practice. May nature be filled with loving kindness. Despite the fact we have not been very kind to her. And if it feels right for you, I invite you to acknowledge the sacred land that you are standing on. Thinking about the indigenous peoples, perhaps, who initially settled the land you're on. Let's take a moment to reflect on that.
All right. I'm going to take it to the floor. So I'm going to just switch my camera and you can have a carpet or a mat. And I'm not doing that just because it just makes it easier for me to teach without that constraint, but feel free to um, have a nice carpet or mat rug. So we're having a little bit of slower experience this morning. I'm not working you quite as hard. Some of you, I'm sure, are very happy about that. All right, so your Tadaka Mudra. I always start in this pose because for me, it's like the samastiti of standing. Your legs straight or bent. I'm just gonna angle my camera down a little bit more. All right, so when you're ready, we're just going to work with the neck a little bit here. Inhale, arms coming up overhead. Now, some of you will need a bolster or something overhead because you won't be able to come all the way up. Exhale, drop the shoulder blades, bend the elbows. Now, you could be doing this on a rolled mat or a rolled blanket that goes from the head to the base of the rib cage. Inhale, arms up. Tuck your chin in if it's comfortable, Jalandarabandha. And exhale, hands coming down. You can release that chin lock or keep it. I'm releasing mine just to work with the movement of the neck a bit. Inhale, arms coming up, nodding the chin in to meet the rising chest if that works for your neck. Exhale, bend the elbows. Drop the shoulder blades. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, coming down again. If your lower back's hurting you as you do this, do bend the knees. Just get this going, it's very soothing. This is a great one to do on a day you're feeling some pain in your neck and shoulders. Safely get things moving a little easier on the floor. So exhale from the pelvic floor all the way up to the belly. As you inhale, can you breathe from the chest to the belly? Inhale, upper chest, middle chest, lower chest, full belly, chin tucks in. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, lower back to the floor, dropping those shoulder blades. Inhale, arms coming up, chest rising, chin coming in. And exhale, hands coming down. Pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, lower back comes to the floor and rest. Now, if you have room, do you have room to move your arms all the way up and down and just notice how that feels? Like making snow angels. Wonderful exercise, snow angels. For those of you who have snow where you're living, and just notice how that feels in the neck and shoulders. Again, this is a wonderful one to do with a rolled mat underneath your spine from your head to the base of your rib cage. If you want, you can exhale and add on that bent elbows, hands coming down. So you can put those two poses together, variations together. Inhale, expanding all around you like the radiant sun out of the heart. Exhale, hands coming down at the sides or bend the elbows and bring the hands down. So pick one or the other. And you can just go up and down. You could add miyasa, that finger movement to this as well. 
with the hands coming up and down. Try to bring your attention to one arm and then the other. I tend to, for example, my attention tends to be always on my left hand. And that's probably because I'm pretty right brain dominant. So I do really try to work on feeling my right side a bit more and connecting more to my left brain, which I always need to work a little bit more. It's not my strength. So just notice maybe that preference within your brain and your body. As you do this simple movement, we're gonna stay now. Now your arms, do you want them, which height feels better for you? Arms all the way overhead, that's the classical pose or some other version. Which one feels better for your neck and shoulders? Is it possible for you to interlock the hands, palms coming up, feet together, and breathe here, Tadaka Mudra? Do you need something under the head so that the chin isn't sticking up to the ceiling, but it's slightly down? And there's an alignment between the top of your head and the base of the spine. And breathe here. Perhaps add a hold after exhale, Tadaka Mudra, that mudra or seal made by the belly drawing in and up, pelvic floor in and up, chin down, hold after exhale, those three bandhas from the pelvic floor up to the chin. Banda means lock, release the lock, inhale into the chest and into the belly. Feel the back rise and arch, exhale pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, draw everything in and up, Hold after exhale. As you do that, stretch the palms away. Stretch the whole spine, one more. And release. All right, some neck movement. So you stay lying down. I'm just going to sit for a minute to show this. It's a little hard to show on the floor. And actually, with my camera, it's probably fairly good. So inhale, your arms are going to come up. You're lying down. Exhale, you're going to bring one arm down and turn your head towards that lower arm. Inhale, center. Exhale, other side. So we're getting into deeper muscles around the neck and the head. So I'm going to show it on the floor now. Inhale, arms coming up, Tadaka Mudra. Your arms can be wider if that works better for your neck and shoulders. Exhale, one hand coming down. I do invite you to put a blanket or pillow under the head. Now, as I turn the head, the back of the head goes more towards my upper arm. Inhale, untwist the head, arms coming up. Exhale, other arm down, turn the head towards that lower hand, back of the head towards the upper arm. Feel that stretch in the neck and shoulder. Inhale, center. Keep this going side to side or start to stay a breath or two on each side. Stoops in your own timing. Your body will tell you when it's had enough, so don't stay too long beyond what your body's capable of. It's quite a deep stretch 
of one side of the neck and then the other. Just remember to bring the back of the head towards that upper arm at the end of the twist to get better alignment. In Krishmacharya's yoga, he doesn't talk about physical alignment very much, but it is mentioned in poses like this, where it's key for safety. Always adjust that top arm so that the shoulder feels best, not compressed. There's enough space there to open things up. Just finishing your last round and then resting for a moment where we move into Divi Padapitam Bridge. Actually, we're going to skip bridge. We're going to go into what's often called banana pose in the West. For who's in the room today, I think this will be a better choice. I'm going to walk my feet to one side. Who's classically start with the left? I'm going to the right just so you can see me a bit better. I like to cross my outer foot over my inner. That's a variation you might like or not. I like to bring my shoulders to that same side, to the right. And then find where your arms feel best, any height. Now you could inhale outside arm up, exhale arm down, or just stay. Get into that rib cage, the hip, the lower back. Stretching one side of the spine at a time. Put your focus on the part of your body that you feel needs it the most. Try to breathe into that place, direct your attention to that part of your body. Where the attention goes, the prana or energy flows. And Dan Siegel adds, neural connections grow. My attention goes, prana flows. Integration grows. Harmony within our nervous system. When you're ready, release. We'll go to the other side. This is a restorative pose. It's a stay pose, walking your feet to the other side. Krishmacharya's yoga, he does add a movement of the outer arm up and down if you want to add. And normally the back, the upper back is just straight, but adding that, those shoulders to the other side. Again, I'm crossing my outside foot over the inner to keep the hip down. 
which is particularly useful if you do have some tightness in that hip lower back, the QL area. Just breathing here. Pose is also used for indigestion, which brings us to the name of the pose in Sanskrit, Jatra Paravritti, Parshva Variation. The Jatra Agni fired the belly. You do a hold on inhale. You have a weak digestive system. You want to fire it up. Add that hold after inhale and visualize that fire of the belly expanding. Hold after inhale about half the length of your inhale. That changes the focus of your pose if that's what you personally want to work on. So pick your medicine. Where your attention goes, the prana flows. And your neural integration grows. Harmony between body, breath, mind. Which allows you to experience the stillness of your spirit. in all its radiance. Just getting out of the way. So that the sun can shine. When you're ready, release that pose. Okay, so counter pose. I'm going to work you a little bit before we end today. It is the morning, so you're not too sleepy. Inhale, arms overhead to your place. Exhale, bring one leg up or the other. Now you might need to bend the opposite leg. Inhale, extend. Now I'm going to do this with pointed toes. On the inhale, exhale, flexing the foot, perhaps bending that other leg in. Might be a little tight. And this is for the lower back as well as the upper back. And it uses the core. So try to move the leg with the exhale from the pelvic floor up. So this is Tadaka Mudra linked with Ekapara Padangustasana. Ekapadangustasana, the supta version supine version, just saying that. For those of you trying to learn the names of the poses. Now you can keep that going or you can move into a different pose, Urdhva Prasrita Padasana. Legs up, hands down. Inhale, bring one leg up, sorry, down as the arms come up. You can use opposite arm to leg to work on that harmony of the nervous system. This is bilateral, using both sides of the brain at once. And again, use the core to move the legs. So start to exhale before you start to move which is always the cue for the breath in this yoga. Now, if this doesn't feel enough for you, you could do both legs at once, but for most people, they won't use the deep core muscles as much. Go more into the rectus abdominis, the more surface layer muscles. So most people better to do one leg at a time Modify by bending one knee.
We're just not going down as far. And when you feel complete, just bend your knees to your chest, Upanasana. Inhale, knees away. You might want to roll your shoulders forward as you do that to work with the neck and shoulders. Exhale, roll your shoulders down, your shoulder blades down your back. For those of you who have a bit of sway back, your sacrum has a bit of an alignment issue, you might want to add that block underneath the lower back to help decrease that lordosis in the back. So that certainly is quite a game changer for my back because I have that situation. I know at least one of you has that same problem. So where's your focus, lower back or upper back? If it's upper back, shoulders forward as you inhale and draw the shoulders back and down as you exhale, working on the protraction and retraction of the shoulders. You can also work one shoulder at a time with an injury and draw it across as you exhale and then inhale, lengthen. That one's great for rotator cuff injuries. I don't think any of you are in that situation, but just for the teachers in the room, I'm just going to remind you of that variation. And moving into your Shavasana when you're ready. Just putting something under the thighs. Just rest. As you do that, I'm just going to bring you through a loving kindness meditation. You like you can visualize yourself lying in that radiance of the moon. The moon representing a still, calm, cool mind. I am filled with loving kindness. I am safe from all harm. I am healthy, happy, and whole. I am filled with endless joy. I am filled with loving kindness. I am safe from all harm.
I am healthy, happy, and whole. I am filled with endless joy. Perhaps reminding yourself of your own sankalpa, your own promise to yourself, intention at the beginning of the class. When you're complete, starting to make your way to a seated position to close together. Om Satgamaya Om to sat from untruth to truth. May we be led from tamas to jyoti, from darkness to light. May we be led from limitation to freedom. May this leave us with peace in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. May this peace protect us from our own negativity, the negativity of others, and for any negativity in nature or our environment. Harion, may all obstacles be removed from that conscious link between us. Namaste, namaskaram. Thank you very much.